What's new? It's time for some new products and some updated products as well. Some revisions. First up, we've got a revision for the ADT 7410. This temperature sensor from analog devices, uh, which is why it's in red, it was a partnership with DigiKey and uh, ADI. Uh, it's in um, beautiful red, now has a nice silk screen. And it's also, this was literally the last sensor before we STEM iq everything. Um, we finally ran out of the old PCBs. Uh, we now have the STEM IQT version of the sensor. It's a lovely temperature sensor. It's inexpensive. It's uh, analog device quality. And now it's plug and play with STEM IQT ports on it. Uh, you can still use all of our existing CircuitPython and Arduino code, uh, but I don't have to do any soldering. All right, and for the next one, before we go and talk about it, um, we have this like sort of rule for it is we don't want to put our logo on like shot glasses and like you know t-shirts that aren't cool or just like basically almost anything that's not electronic based yeah but people all the time say i want adafruit swag and we're like well i don't want to like print it on a pen or like rebrand someone else's soldering iron i'm definitely like, glad that the whole shot glass thing is over yeah it's it like really nice yeah and we're just like not into that so anything that we put the logo on has to be special and usually that's reserved for our pcbs so we have a workaround <laughs> And here is one of this week's new products. Well, this is uh, coming soon. They're yeah. not quite in the store, but I did, uh, we did get nice photos because yeah. why not? These are PCB uh, coasters. Two PCB yeah. coasters, and um, there's two designs. Yeah. One is aluminum PCB, um, so it's it's a stiffer material, and one is FR4, but it's two millimeter FR4. Yeah. Ironically, the aluminum is actually a little less expensive, um, but it comes in silver with um, lead-free hassle on the top. Yeah. And the gold one is again FR4, two millimeters thick, uh, but it does have uh, ENIG gold yeah. uh, coat. So you have silver and gold. We're not going to make these forever either. So this is just a fun experiment. This is one of the few things with the native for logo. So yeah, yeah. we had the other um, PCB coasters that were actually down in the clearance section if you want to pick them yeah. up. Uh, the hexagonal gun ones that we um, did as a partnership with, um, I can't remember their name. Boldport. Boldport. Wow. That was a good find. Who says memory? Who who what? said? <laughs> who who says, says your memory goes away? I forgot like, who said memory. Okay. Uh, Anyways, all right, so you're um, coming soon. All right, so the start of the show tonight, besides you, lady, our community, our team, our customers, everyone who makes this thing go is da, 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 yet another RP2040 feather. You're gonna see a bunch of these because I designed a whole bunch in a row. This is the USB host feather. Um, it's a big deal. I like that we're getting really weird boards out. This is a weird one. The DVI feather was weird. We're, we're back on our bullshit. This is, we are absolutely <laughs> back on our bullshit. So this is an RP2040 feather, and it's got you know the. ARM Cortex M0, dual core, 133 megahertz, uh, eight megabytes of flash, boot button, reset button, uh, stem IQT, LiPo battery management, so you can take this portable and it recharge the battery, USB-C, all that good stuff. And on the other end, um, in the space left over, there's a USB host port. Uh, next to, yeah, so this is your standard type A USB port. Uh, and even though it's a surface mount uh, package, it's quite strong, believe me. I've, I've, tried, I've definitely plugged and unplugged many, many a thing and it does not rip off. Uh, although, don't try. You you could if you really wanted to. Um, and as well as that, there's also got a, uh, to the left of it, you see that big inductor. There's a 5-volt boost converter. And you see that thing that says 5, kind of above the RX, kind of in the bottom right corner. That's a 5-volt fuse uh, so that if you happen to short the 5-volt power, it won't uh, accidentally damage your uh, battery or your boost converter. And, um, you know, you might be saying, hey, wait, the RP2040 doesn't have two USB ports, what's going on? Do you switch between the two of them? How do you do it? Uh, how do you do it? Uh, yeah. Good oh, question, yeah. with a lot yeah. of hacky yeah. code. Yeah. So this, the native USB is still the USB-C port. So it's how you program the board, get into the bootloader, do debugging, um, et cetera. And on the right is a PIO bit banged USB port. So you can actually, because this is the thing, the RP2040 does have native USB host. You can use the main port as host, but then you have to like unplug it every time you program mm -hmm. it, and it's like a total pain. So what this does is it has a separate single core dedicated just to PIO bit banging out USB host and it works. And it works like kind of well, actually, like <laughs> considering your bit banging USB host, which I, I don't know who else has done it. It's based off of, um, I, I, I'm gonna mispronounce their name. I think it's Sekong uh, Ganok. 
is their name. They're a developer who wrote the PIO BitBank code in Pico SDK, and then we um, turned it in Infruit and TAC, who works for us on TeamUSB, turned that into um, a supported interface in TeamUSB Arduino. So within Arduino, you can now plug in USB devices like mass storage, um, CDC, USB serial, um, HID, or you know if you want to add other protocols, go for it. I think even hubs work. And you can send and receive data um, as if it had a native USB port. Now, I'll say it's a bit banged. It's, this is not high speed. It's full speed. You're not going to get that. That's okay, because there's some really good uses for But this. there's a lot of uses. And again, it's very, very rare to get a low-cost device that has USB host. Usually, you have to go to a very high-end microcontroller to get two USB ports. Yeah. Um, so, um, what could you use this for? What could you use for? So, one is HID. Well, first off, uh, one demo I thought would be cool is you plug in a USB key and then you do data logging to that USB key. So, you can yeah. write and read data off of a USB key instead of an SD card where then you yeah. need, you know, because then you can unplug it and then you're like, okay, my USB key is ready to go. Yeah. Um, another uh, thing you can do is it, which I use it for, is I use this to program microcontrollers. So, if you have a board that programs like an ESP32 and you program it over the USB CDC, um, this can read and write the serial data as if it was just like a normal UART. And I use it to program USB, uh, sorry, ESP32 boards over USB. Yeah. And then- um, we, uh, have, we have a really big keyboard we're gonna show you. <laughs> okay, another thing is you can do HID remapping. Um, or other weird USB okay. devices. So let's, uh, let's, I'm gonna go to us. Go to us. This is Look really at this. big. Okay. So you got this IntelliKeys, and this is um, this is a um, underneath is actually a touch matrix of eight, 28 by 28 buttons, and you have this uh, overlay that goes over. So this is just like a touch matrix. It's not capacitive touch. It's resistive touch, and it has like 28 or 24 by 24 or something like that. Uh, matrix of keys, and then you can have these different overlays yeah. then, that go, let me go over to the it. Side here. So this is, you know, used in an assistive technology yeah. setting, um, and it's great because and it's, it's, really and it's amazing. But these don't work with modern computers. That's right. And the reason they don't work for modern computers is the company. I don't think they want to have business, but they discontinued this product. And the way it works is um, it dynamically changes the. First off, the firmware is loaded with the driver. So the driver itself, it only is for, I think, Windows, and it, I think it stopped working as a Windows 7, and it loads the firmware for the Cypress Easy USB chip um, through the um, driver itself. So when this connects, it says, hi, send me the latest firmware, and the firmware binary blob is sent over USB, and then it re-enumerates as the new device. Second, depending on what the overlay is, it has um, different devices. For example, this one has a mouse overlay as well. So this can yeah, act like as a mouse and keyboard, that. whereas this one has arrow keys, so it's only a keyboard, so it comes as a different device. And, and when you talk to people who need a device like this, they're um, not really able to find something right now. Yeah, There's nothing so that really does it, especially something that works with an iPad or a Chromebook or right. an Android tablet. So or, yeah, this does work still on Windows. I think you can still, like, you still kind of get it working on Windows. Yeah. People can compile it, but it doesn't work on However, one, other devices. However, one thing I'll say, because I've talked to folks that uh, our caretakers for for uh, primary caretakers for people that have accessibility needs, they're not Windows Seven experts. Like this is yeah, and the it's unsigned. And yeah, it's like okay, all you need to do is like recompile a kernel and nar, nar, nar. like all of a sudden it starts to you know it's like you may as well just. But also maybe you want to use like a, a tablet. Like yeah. a lot of people are using tablets and phones these days. They don't want to yeah. haul around the laptop with and, them. And iOS has a lot of accessibility stuff, but yeah. there's nothing that plugs into it that's, that's okay. like this. So what you do. Um, is you've got you know this or you have other devices that are HID and you want to twist them yeah. or convert them or remap them and then you plug it in this this is the IntelliKeys plugged in I'm doing this live demo I hope this works I tried it before but it works uh, plug the USB good. host here and then this is the feather and then the um, USB side of the feather connects to a uh, USB camera. These are like the camera Lady adapters. Asked, Lady had asked, she's like, do you have one of those lightning to USB connectors? And I rolled in with two different types. You did two different types. Right. This one works. <laughs> um, and this allows you to connect keyboards to um, devices. So um, let's try yeah, plugging I'll, it in. I'm going to go to the overhead. So let's uh, see what happens with your iPad. Okay. So Ready? it does take a second because it's okay. like it has to enumerate. Oh, it's and like, what am I? How did I get here? All okay. Right. Let me see. It didn't make the noise, so I don't know. Okay. Um, I will say that this is a live demo. Okay. Yeah. 
I heard the noise. Beeped. I heard the noise. It just beeped. So now when I type on this, oh, do you want? Can you put me in the corner? I can. I can. I can put us here like like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let me try it live demo. So I'm gonna try typing. Ooh, hell. Low. Enter. So there you go. So this I, is like a scene from Sphere. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so like again, something that is. It seems like, oh, what's the big deal? It's USB, can you just plug it in? But it's actually no. it's so difficult to get this stuff working. Yeah. For the folks who know what this is and what this is all about, you're going to freak out. You're going to be like, wait a second. So it does work. Um, yeah. Okay, so here's the, the caveat. Caveat incoming. Um, this is only for Arduino. It's not supporting CircuitPython this yeah. time. And I, I do not know if or when we might be able to get it working. We could use some help. Um, if somebody is interested in helping. Um, but we do have it working in Arduino. We've got mass storage, CDC, and HID. So not every, like you can't necessarily plug in a camera and you can't necessarily plug in like your phone or yeah. a Kindle. Not everything is gonna work. Um, just some of the really basic USB devices. But so, people could have- Every county, every city has people who have used these or now these are get, about to get thrown away or, or like they're in a warehouse somewhere. So this just means we could potentially unlock a lot of hardware for people with accessibility needs. Also, this is really cool. Like this is a cool keyboard. Like this is neat. Okay, uh, so that's a live demo. So that's the USB host feather. Uh, right. Really neat. Uh, also, of course, if you want to do USB host to something else, um, like you want this to go to I squared C, or you want to maybe have it read a keyboard and then have that come out through the UART, right? You could still program it very easily because the USB port, you're not doing that hot swap USB port thing. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't have to be USB to USB conversion. It can be USB to something else or back and forth or whatever. Anyways, I think it'd be interesting. Um, yeah, and you know, just weird. on a side note, it is, <laughs> Adafruit's still around. We're still able to do hardware. We want to do weird stuff like this. And even if you don't buy stuff for like, weird stuff like this, when you buy other things, it supports all yeah. this. Yeah, and this took a lot of development time. This and was a heavy lift. It was a heavy lift, but we did it. Very cool. So that's this week's new product. Check it out, it's in the shop and you can get 10% off. New, 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 new,